Hi everyone, I will be talking to you on bisphosphonate therapy in osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a debilitating condition where there is decreased bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration, increasing the risk of fracture. Bone is a very dynamic tissue which is constantly undergoing remodeling with bone resorption and formation. Osteoporosis occurs due to the cumulative effect of bone resorption in excess of bone formation. Management includes lifestyle measures and pharmacotherapy. There are various therapeutic options which can be used in osteoporosis, such as bisphosphonates, tenosumab, which are known as anti-resorptive agents, and options such as teriparatide, abiloparatide, remesusumab, which are anabolic agents. For most postmenopausal women with osteoporosis, the preferred first-line option is bisphosphonates. These are preferred as initial therapy because of their efficacy, favorable cost, and the availability of long-term safety data. Let's see what bisphosphonates are. So these are chemically stable derivatives of inorganic pyrophosphate. They are very high, they have very high affinity to bone mineral because they bind to hydroxyapatite crystals in the bone. They inhibit the action of osteoclasts. Therefore, the osteoclast mediated bone resorption is reduced and th therefore these are used as a treatment modality in osteoporosis. What are the preparations which are available? So we have oral and IV preparations. The oral preparations are alendronate, ibandronate and resendronate. Alendronate can be given once weekly as well as resendronate once weekly. Ibandronate is usually given once monthly. Intravenous preparations are zolendronic acid which is given annually. Alendronate, resendronate and zolendronic acid has proven benefit in reducing vertebral and hip fractures whereas ibandronate has shown to reduce vertebral fractures. How do we evaluate a patient prior to starting bisphosphonate treatment? Patients should be carefully evaluated to exclude other secondary causes of osteoporosis. If found, these should be dealt separately. Calcium, vitamin D status and renal functions should be evaluated. If there is existing hypocalcemia, that should be corrected with calcium and vitamin D as Bisphosphonates will reduce the calcium levels as a side effect. It is important to evaluate dental hygiene as well since bisphosphonates rarely can cause osteonecrosis of the jaw. First line option is usually oral alendronate. This is given once weekly. Patients should be advised to take the drug the first thing in the morning on an empty stomach with a large glass of water and stay upright for 30 to 60 minutes. It is important to note that only 1% of alendronate is absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract and therefore patients should not take any food or drink during this particular period to facilitate the absorption of the drug. Oral bisphosphonates should not be used as initial therapy in patients who are unable to follow the dosing requirements of inability to stay upright for at least 30 to 60 minutes after drug ingestion. Oral bisphosphonates should also not be started in those with esophageal disorders, active peptic ulcer disease, as it can worsen the gastrointestinal symptoms. However, it can be tried in patients with well-controlled gastroesophageal reflux disease or peptic ulcer disease. It is contraindicated if the GFR is less than 30. If there is an intolerance to oral bisphosphonates, IV zolendronate can be used instead. This is given as an intravenous infusion annually. Common side effects include flu-like symptoms such as fever, joint pains and muscle pains due to an acute phase reaction experienced within the first three days following the ingestion. However, these are quite usually mild and can be treated with simple analgesics. How do we monitor response to therapy? DEXA scans can be repeated in two years to see if there is any improvement. Bone mineral density, which is stable or improving, suggests response to treatment. Bone markers can also be done to look for a response, but these are usually not widely available in Sri Lanka. 
How long should patients be on a bisphosphonate? If a patient is on alendronate treatment, uh, usually the treatment duration is five years. For zolendronic acid, the treatment duration is three years. Following this, further treatment is dependent on individual fracture risk assessment. If a patient is a low risk patient without fragility fractures and having a stable BMD treatment can be discontinued. However, patients should be reassessed in two years and if fracture risk is high, treatment should be restarted. In high risk patients, for example, patients who have developed a fragility fracture before or during treatment or patients with T-scores less than minus three, uh, while on treatment, treatment with alendronate can continue for even up to 10 years and zolendronate up to 6 years. It is also important to remember that long-term usage of bisphosphonates is also associated with atypical femoral fractures. If a patient on long-term treatment complains of groin or thigh pain, they should be evaluated for possible atypical femoral fractures. Finally, lifestyle measures are also extremely important. Patients should be advised to take adequate calcium and vitamin D and exercise and stop smoking. Counseling also on fall prevention is extremely important and they should be advised to avoid alcohol. These measures should be adopted to reduce bone loss in people with osteoporosis. Thank you.